All right, guys, I am about to show you something that is absolutely crazy and astonishingly beautiful and weird. And it makes you think about the future and where we are going. And chess will never be the same. Uh, it might sound like a bit grandiose, but wait till you see the game and wait till you hear the story. So this is a game between uh, Alpha Zero uh, and Stockfish. And you're probably familiar with Stockfish. It is the strongest, it used to be the strongest chess program on the planet, uh, battling for that position with uh, Komodo and Houdini. And it won the 2016 World Championship and it's widely used uh, as the top analysis tool for professional chess players. Google has a division uh, they bought it's called deep mind and they work with something called neural networks and uh, the idea is that it's a computer program that can learn basically uh, there's a lot of stuff uh, about this av uh, available online just uh, go check it out i will put a link to uh, a scientific paper that uh, deep mind put out on um on alpha zero um that will be in the in the description so you can read about how they did this uh, basically uh, their first project with deep mind uh, in gaming was to defeat uh, one of the best go players in the world go is a game uh, the, one of the few games that has uh, even higher complexity than chess uh, from a mathematical uh, point of view and it has been very very hard to crack uh, and until very, very recently, the top human players were able to beat the top uh, programs. But then uh, DeepMind uh, under Google, uh, they programmed something called AlphaGo. And AlphaGo was able to play against itself and learn from its own mistakes. It did that millions, if not billions of times uh, until it was uh, strong enough to compete and actually beat uh, a guy called Lee Sedol, I believe. I pronunciation is completely off, of course. Um, and it beat him convincingly. And now they have taken that approach and they have generalized it. So what that means is that they have change the way the neural network works so you, you can basically put in any game that has the characteristics that we're looking for for instance uh, it's a game that you should be able to win so that it's you can evaluate it it's not subjective and all of this so like uh, chess checkers go shogi uh, all of these kinds of games uh, you can program the rules in to the 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 network the network is called Alpha Zero, uh, and it will then play itself until uh, it's well forever basically until you say please stop and then you can use it to uh, play whatever game and they did that uh, and they they played after four hours four hours of training they played Stockfish. They played a hundred games. They won three games with black out of a hundred. And with white, Alpha Zero won 25 games against Stockfish. And they lost zero, zero games. And I am going to take a look in this video of one of the games uh, because this thing does not play like you're used to see an engine playing at all i could talk for hours about the implications of this it, this is uh to me very beautiful and also kind of scary all right so let's just take a look at this so um it played we, Al alpha zero has white here and it played uh d4 in a lot of the games it had as white and uh, we see the uh, french defense so it hasn't invented something uh, completely original on the first two moves, but just just wait. So all right, um, okay. If you if you're not familiar with this, we are battling for this, and later, uh, Black will try to undermine this uh, D pawn. This is the idea of Black's play. And we close the center, and this is uh, 
back in the old days, uh, the, how you beat computers, uh, the accepted wisdom was that you made a very closed position and, and then you maneuvered very, very slowly to suffocate the computer because uh, you would exploit what's called the horizon effect, that if the computer cannot uh, search and find anything concrete, uh, it'll just get lost in the wilderness of variations. Uh, and that's how, for instance, uh, Gary Kasparov beat uh, Deep Blue in 96. He would make all these very small moves and just very slowly, positionally grind the computer down. And well, the formula has been updated based on, well, uh, what is now ancient wisdom. Uh, so, all right, we, it's very typical, we reinforce our center with this uh, move and these pawns will be here for a long time. And uh, their idea is to have a uh, keep black boxed in. That's the whole idea. All right, so black does not want to be boxed in, so he will undermine the pawn. This is very, very uh, common theory in, uh, in the French defense. And we protect the pawn with the knight. The pawn is captured. And um, instead of immediately recapturing, uh, we make this move with the knight because we would like to recapture with uh, this knight. All right. A little check is thrown. This is about the time where, you know, stuff gets interesting. So we block the check uh, with a bishop like this. And after this, black says, oh, I was... Uh, I was only joking, I'll put my bishop uh, back here on, on c5 and I will protect this pawn. Uh, and Alpha Zero says, nope, nope, I will gain space and I will push you away. So after black retreats all the way, we can, uh, Alpha Zero can comfortably recapture this pawn. and. This might look a little weird because now we cannot use this pawn. If it had been here, we could uh, use it to reinforce uh, to play a c4 at some point. But uh, that uh, Alpha Zero thinks this is not necessary and it likes the space it has here. And it really likes space. It really likes space and it really understands uh, the advantage of having space. Uh, so develop the pieces, black develops a piece, nothing uh, revolutionary about that. Uh, so again, black is trying to undermine the extra space and free his pieces and Alpha Zero does not want uh, Stockfish to have place to maneuver at all. So the uh, knight is kicked the knight is kicked and um, we have this exchange. And now we are back to this triangle of pawns uh, in, in the center that uh, we also started with, uh, if even though uh, this pawn uh, was is not the original D pawn, it's, it's the C pawn. So Stockfish is basic, uh, basically being cramped still. So, so White has maintained his uh, or her or its um, positional idea the strategy it, it plays with a, a strategy that flows throughout the entire game there's none of this and you'll notice there are none of this uh, random moves complete computer bullshit that you'll very often see where in like in a closed position a computer will just play seemingly completely random moves because it has no plan seemingly Alpha Zero has a plan. All right. So th the knight uh, is developed, and he just, uh, Alpha Zero just says, you know, I like my space. I want to keep you cramped. And Stockfish uh, goes on the attack. And now we put the, uh, the bishop on a very good diagonal. It is the good bishop. It is not. Uh, hindered by its own pawns and 
we see, just give me a second. And Stockfish says, all right, thank you very much. I will uh, capture your bishop with my knight and I will have the two bishops. And uh, generally we say that having two bif bishops is an advantage. But what do we also say? We say it's an advantage in open uh, positions. This is not an open position. And it was the bad bishop of white that we got rid of. Had it, you know, had we been able, had black been able to get rid of this bishop, uh, the ev evaluation would be completely different. Um, so Stockfish clearly <laughs> does not understand the strategy that uh, Alpha Zero is, is using. Now we, we see a very nice move like this is just beautiful so if i was playing this and i somehow got this position against like some human i would capture my knight like this or if i was super advanced somehow i would do some maneuver like capture here and maybe try to get my knight into this square or something like that um but alpha zero captures with the king because the king only really needs to castle if there are issues with the king's safety. But let's take a look at these pieces. On the back rank still, no real ways to get out. Back rank still, these pawns keep it very, very, very much under control. These pawns in the center, not going anywhere fast, so probably stay on the back rank for some time. This uh, this bishop has one check here. Is that going to be a problem? Probably not. And this rook also not going anywhere soon. So Stockfish tries to get out with the bishop. King e3. You know, obviously. So that that's how this alpha zero plays. Beautiful. So. The king is active. It will be uh, nice for the end game. Uh, if you, uh, if Alpha Zero ever wants to trade into some end game, the king will be close to the center. It can defend the pawns. And in the words of Wilhelm Steinitz, the king is an active piece. Use it, and that is what uh, Alpha Zero is doing here. Uh, so it seems a bit like a computer move to me. This one, b6, I, I don't understand that completely. Um, and now it's time, you know. And now Alpha Zero has everything under control, put very, very nice pawns in the center, protected them with the king, of course. So what do we do? We expand, we gain more space. Like this, g4. And Stockfish wants to uh, undermine, of course, and free itself so it can use the beautiful bishops and now at least the rook is in the game <laughs> and look at this this is how few moves stockfish has available by the way stockfish when i run this on my computer it has four cores like an i7 machine uh, the new version of Stockfish. Stockfish says 0 0.00. It says this is a draw, and uh, it, it's comfortable that it, it can hold this. And it moves the uh, the bishop back to protect here. And so that's you just see how Alpha Zero is just keeping Black completely boxed in. There is no, there is no way to get out. This rook is on an open file, but where can it go? We, we, we are covering all of this. You know, you could go here, and then what would you do? There's no use for it here. We even, we even have this one. So, all right, gain more space. We know the, we know the plan. We know how it plays now. Gain more space. Kind of a random queen move. So, the queen. It's not completely random. The queen wants to come in here and maybe threaten some stuff. But if you look at how this king is, it has made like it's it's castling 2.0. This this is the next level of castling. It's castled in the middle of the board. So 
the queen can get into the position, but everything is protected. It has no. Uh, it's just one queen. You know, it, it it you need you need more backup, and all the rest of the pieces are still at home. All right. So we gain the space over here. Rook goes over, ready to infiltrate. So Starkfish does not want to keep this pawn protected forever, but as soon as it plays this move, it also says I'm not going to have a pawn break anytime soon. Because if with this pawn back here, we could more we, we could dream of pushing uh, f6 at some point trying to do a pawn break. So Stockfish made it even harder for itself. Not that I know any, I like, I can easily say, oh, there was a mistake by Stockfish, but I, you know, it's not that I can suggest anything better. Um, Rook c2, just trying to double up. Uh, Alpha zero has all the time in the world. And this move by the king does absolutely nothing. And why does it, why does Stockfish then, then do it? Well, it, because it has to make a move and no, no other moves gives it any sort of advantage whatsoever. So it just does a move that does nothing. And uh, we, we double up. So basically this game looks a bit like a very, very strong positional player playing against some kind of like a master or something that was just, and he was just, or she was just being slowly grinded down. Um, Except this is Stockfish, the silicon monster that makes no tactical mistakes at all, ever, apparently. Apparently not so. The tactical mistakes are just extremely deep. So Alpha Zero doubles up the rooks. And Stockfish is just shuffling the pieces around. And now Alpha Zero puts a rook on the seventh. So a lot of the stuff that it does is old school kind of human ideas. Double up the rooks, put a rook on the seventh. That's kind of Nimsuich wrote about this and every grandmaster knows about this and every club pl player knows about this. The thing is, the thing is that Alpha Zero is doing this against Stockfish. Stockfish wants to challenge these almighty rooks and uh, get rid of some material. And Alpha Zero is very, very happy to oblige because like, look at these pieces all on the back rank and no future whatsoever. Look at this bishop, man, it's disgusting. Infiltrate with a rook in number two. There's a little threat. So we just go back and says, no, it's no problem. <laughs> and, and we see these ridiculous king moves by Stockfish. And now we are probing a little bit over here on the king side. And this is about the time where the game goes into the next gear, where it just goes from being beautiful positional chess to just being absolutely out there, beautiful and scary. Stockfish still convinced it's doing okay. It says I will threaten the knight. Here we have a little surprise. How about that for a move? How about that for a move? Okay, so let's just get rid of the tactical uh, mess here so we can like clean up the position and see what this is about. Capture like this recapture with the queen keeping our dangerous outside pawn and now we capture the bishop this is a, a bish this is a peace sacrifice uh, and there's no immediate tactical justification so I, I'm not going to show you some amazing way where uh, black is going to lose the queen in the next couple of moves at all this is a long-term positional sacrifice and it's under the same theme that the entire game has been under. This crap bishop, this crap rook, and this crap queen. And also, this crap queen, really. 
none of these are doing anything the pawns are immobile all frozen and now there will never ever ever be an f6 pawn break so there's nothing at all that black can really do with the extra piece this is kind of a kind of a piece sacrifice where like if you saw Aronian play it you would go oh that's a very beautiful practical idea uh, of course the computer will refute it in a second uh, but it will give him practical chances or whatever but but no this is not going to be refuted by Stockfish. All right, let's start some fireworks. We play F5 here because you cannot capture like this because this check is going to pick up the bishop. Also, you cannot, and if you want to capture like, like this, uh, the queen will be able to infiltrate so let's take a look at that you you capture here you go here you have a threat of uh, some checkmate here uh, working with the rook also threatening this pawn and there is a very very long tactical line uh, where you can see that this uh, wins you can also kind of feel it but uh, stockfish agrees that that this uh, wins uh, i'm not going to show the entire li line it's quite long justify this completely but stockfish agreed so it didn't capture the pawn um, instead it played uh, rook g8 and now we see the queen coming in slowly still you cannot uh, capture any of these pawns we're just trying to orchestrate um, a defense black is a piece up but defending and now we play uh, f6 ourselves so this pawn is super strong. It's going to be a queen maybe someday, and uh, it's there's no way to undermine it. This pawn chain is uh, rock, rock solid. All right, a ridiculous king move again. Doesn't do too much. And now we see a mysterious king move by Alpha Zero that I don't really understand. Again, a uh, king move uh, by Black and this rook move also a bit mysterious maybe maybe this superhuman super computer computer was uh, even getting a little bit lost in the variations here or maybe this is just way too deep for uh, for my pathetic little mind to understand so black is just going back and forth with the, the king and now now we see the queen coming in and of, of course we are hoping to get a queen trade and we do get a queen trade uh, and of course you know normally the queen trade should benefit the uh, defending side because uh, now there is you know you have less threats to uh, defend against and the threat of being checkmate checkmated is not that high but this pawn is going to fall these two pawns will be able to push and maybe break free break break free and you still cannot use your extra piece and your rook is still crap we make sure that the rook can't go anywhere keep it chained excuse me keep it chained to the pawn and i don't know if this is just pure desperation because of course we can we are easily able to catch this pawn and this is about the time uh, where Stockfish really realizes that uh, it's losing, actually. Um, and even on, on my machine, and this was run on uh, optimal settings, so like 64 threads uh, on some really badass hardware supplied by Google uh, when they played the games. So it wasn't, they it wasn't playing like a weak version of Stockfish or anything like that. But even on my measly four cores, it, uh, you can actually see that it's losing now. And and we just capture the pawn and get ready to use the king in the end game to uh, and the rook to uh, break free over here. And now we have a passed pawn. We have two actually, this one and this one. And we just infiltrate. Just go over this kind of quickly because this is. 
this is kind of understandable how, how it plays and uh, now um, we threaten to, to queen this move is also just typical computer move like I mean any human player would probably uh, resign here so um, this pawn is just captured there's no ch tactical justification or anything like that and this is the final position because at this point stockfish resigned I don't know if computer can be depressed or whatever but it resigned and obviously you know these pawns just 100% completely unstoppable and there is no sort of perpetual check or anything at all the king is super active and it's just uh, yeah, it's completely over in, in this point so yeah I mean wow <laughs> what a game this let me repeat the computer alpha zero it ran on some insane Google hardware but it only trained for four hours what this is going to mean for artificial intelligence I'm not an expert but dang I think uh, I think the future is it's going to be very soon science fiction times coming very very soon so I hope you enjoy the video um, I do some other videos also uh, that are more like I just did this video because I just needed to share this game with you guys but I, I do some really serious uh, and also kind of fun chess videos also on different channel called Outrage Chess I'll just uh, play a little bit uh, and uh, I'll put a link on the description to like my like my professional chess channel now you must move this bishop tile does tile move the bishop Tal played queen to h4, sacrificing the bishop because this queen is ready to attack!